My next guests both lost their children to Oxycontin addictions and were featured in the new Netflix series, Painkillers. Kelly mm -hmm. Stavron, yeah. as well as Roger Ward, join me now. Um, thank y'all so much for taking some time to join me this evening. Um, Kelly, I, I, I want to go to you because you lost your son, Matthew. Um, I, I was looking at this poll and discussing it with my, my producer. It talks about what Americans say is the greatest uh, threat to U.S. public health. And 26% mm -hmm. said opioids and fentanyl. 23% uh, said obesity. Uh, when it came to firearms and guns, 20% said that was cancer was 11%. And I look at the 26%, and, I, and I'm, it, it is the, you know, you got a big number. But for me, yeah. it, it's not big enough. What do you make of what Americans view as, as the threat? It shocks me. It is so big. It's affected all the families everywhere. If you haven't been affected by it, someone you know has. That is definitely for sure. Yeah. R Roger, you, you lost your son, Riley. Um, do, do you feel like we're, we're missing the big message here when it comes to opioids? I know, I know we talk a lot about fentanyl, but I, yeah. I don't feel like we're talking about the, the mental uh, and addiction problem in the country? Well, well, I, I think that a lot of people misunderstand uh, opioid addiction as a choice and they don't understand that it's a disease. Uh, it changes mm -hmm. people, it changes their brain, their pattern. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of times they, they uh, pass it off as just a choice that their lifestyle that some people want to li live. Now, my son was an athlete. He didn't mess around with drugs and I was with him all the time. I was his coach. Mm -hmm. We did martial arts together, uh, baseball, you know, football, all that stuff. And uh, he was out in the desert, broke his back, had surgery on his back and the doctors prescribed Oxycontin. And when that didn't, when it wore off half through the day and he was starting to get sick, he went back and they doubled his prescription, doubled the amount, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the uh, milligrams amount until he was uh, hopelessly addicted. Yeah. Kelly, so mm -hmm. often you hear from parents um, and they say, not my son, not my daughter. Yeah. Um, well, uh, it's a hard conversation to have, but w were there any signs that you can share with our audience that they could say, oh, I, I see this in my child, I should be concerned? Mm -hmm. Well, definitely. When they are injured, well, Matthew was injured a lot, mm -hmm. basically like this other man here. And he was prescribed Oxycontin at a very young age as a motorcycle racer. And so those injuries over a period of time kept coming, but the Oxycontin kept coming too. And it was shocking at how bad the addiction became. And he would sober up, but then when he would injure himself again, and he would get back into it, it was shocking how far down he would go. He would overdose, often mm -hmm. overdose. You know, Roger, um, the story that Kelly is sharing is similar to, to yours. It's, it's similar to a lot of Americans. I think, and I want you to comment on this, so many Americans think, okay, we're just talking about people that are just straight up addicts. I don't think they consider the, the amount of people that just fall prey to it by a prescription. Absolutely. No, I, right. I believe that a lot of people feel that, you know, like I said, it's a party thing. Maybe that people are doing drugs mm -hmm. and parties, but they don't understand. And uh, I didn't, my wife and I didn't understand when it first began because we had a doctor prescribe it. Uh, he was going to the mm -hmm. hospital. He went to a surgeon to have work on his back. And each one of them kept prescribing more and more of these drugs. And he right. became addicted through doctors. I mean, it wasn't, you know, him going out partying mm -hmm. and buying drugs or having drugs. He got this through. A lot of people just don't understand that. Even my own friends have told me, well, that's their choice. It's the life they live They're, mm -hmm. You know, and they have the stigma about uh, addiction that they don't understand. It's a disease. And it is. It's a disease that changes them. And they can't. He tried hard. We had him through. Uh, rehab programs. Uh, he wanted, he had such a big heart. He hated what he was doing. He hated what it made him do, but he couldn't kick it. He just kept, um, you know, it brought him back over and over again. You know, I, I appreciate y'all being so vulnerable. Um, I hope we can find some type of solution in the near future. Um, we're going to keep talking about it here right. on Cross Country. Thanks so much I for I hope so. Me. And that's one thing Thank I have you. to say about this painkiller movie. I'm so glad it came out 
because yeah, I've had a too. lot of calls recently from people, friends of mine, that said they had no idea yeah. that all these people, not just kids, mm -hmm. but adults, we had police in our program, firemen that hurt themselves and got Absolutely. prescribed pills and became addicted. And it needs, I'm glad they're bringing that out there and the greed from the Sacklers and the Purdue yeah. Pharmacy that they just did this for money. It's sad. Thank y'all so much for joining. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.